this thing on? The name Arthur Fraser is in the headlines a lot these days for two reasons specifically. He's the former spy boss who granted former President Jacob Zuma his medical parole during his tenure as the Commissioner of Correctional Services, unlawfully overruling the Medical Parole Advisory Board in doing so. And then he's the man who laid criminal charges against sitting head of state Cyril Ramaphosa over the February 2020 theft of reportedly hundreds of thousands, even millions of US dollars at his Palapala Pala game farm in Limpopo. But Fraser has done a lot more nefarious stuff, most of it in the shadows, as one would expect in the intelligence world. Also, don't forget, Fraser is the man accused of leaking the so-called spy tapes to Zuma's legal team, which initially saw the NPA dropping corruption charges against Zuma in 2009. Those tapes revealed recorded conversations between then Scorpion's boss Leonard McCarthy and former NPA head Bulilani Nguka about when the most politically damaging time would be to charge Zuma with corruption. The emergence of these spy tapes was used as proof that there was some grand political conspiracy being waged against Zuma to scupper his presidential ambitions. Ultimately, Thabo Mbeki was defeated by Zuma at the ANC's Polokwane conference in December 2007, where Mbeki, worryingly, was seeking a third term in office. So, those are at least three examples of how significant Fraser has been in the broader political context of South Africa. Had the NPA never dropped the corruption charges against Zuma as a result of Fraser's sleight of hand with those tapes, who knows? Zuma could have been successfully prosecuted and jailed, and South Africa could have been spared nine disastrous, ruinous years in which the state was repurposed for the benefit of a select few, including, of course, Zuma's mates, the Guptas. If the surname Fraser sounds slightly familiar, that's because Arthur is the brother of former public service and administration minister Geraldine Fraser Mulaketi. Her husband, Jabu Mulaketi, was the former deputy finance minister under Thabo Mbeki's presidency. So this is a family never far from power and politics. As for Fraser's earlier years, there isn't much on the internet, surprise, surprise, but the Correctional Services Department website says he was involved in student politics and joined the ANC early on in his life. Upon his return to South Africa, Fraser joined the newly formed National Intelligence Agency, the NIA, where he was seconded to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission as an investigator. He would go on to serve as the head of national intelligence in the Western Cape, as well as do a stint at the Department of Home Affairs as the Deputy Director General, the DDG, for the National Immigration Branch. Thereafter, he returned to the NIA as the DDG in charge of offensive and counterintelligence operations. As for his qualifications, he initially claimed, quite bizarrely, to hold a BA Honours degree in film and video production from the rather prestigious University of London. Only problem is he never studied there, and that degree doesn't exist at that institution. After probing questions from the media, he relented and said there'd been a misunderstanding and he'd graduated from the London Institute. As for his time in the private sector, he co-founded a company called Resurgent Risk Managers, along with former NIA boss Manala Manzini. Never far from controversy, in 2014, this particular company would dubiously score 14.3 million rand from the South African Social Security Agency for consultancy services. A year later, they got a 90 million rand contract from the passenger rail agency Prasa on consignment, which means without a tender on the basis of urgency or a lack of competitors. They were to provide security and risk advisory services to Prasa. That's not exactly niche areas of work in South Africa. Fraser claimed to have resigned from resurgent risk managers before he took office as the DG at the State Security Agency in September 2016. 
A national treasury investigation found Fraser had quite possibly submitted a fake tax certificate for the work at Prosser. Law enforcement was supposed to investigate, but it went nowhere, as always seems to be the case when it comes to Mr. Fraser. The fifth installment of the State Capture Inquiries report deals with the State Security Agency. I'm going to curtail what happened there in so far as it relates to Fraser, because it's very complex, there's a lot more, and there's simply not enough time in the day. Zondo's report gives us an indication of just how critical an arm of government the intelligence service is when the state is repurposed to serve narrow party political and financial interests. The report states, quote, one of the reasons why intelligence services are susceptible to politicization is that they are valuable tools, the use and control of which can help cement political power, close quote. Between 2008 and 2011, Fraser ran something called the Principal Agent Network, PAN. I'll let investigative journalist and author Jacques Poe describe what exactly PAN was about, taken from his book, The President's Keepers. Quote, a principal agent network is intelligence jargon for spy handlers, the principals who engage, manage, and deploy spies or agents to perform specific services or functions on behalf of the agency, close quote. So it's not rocket science. You employ people to spy for you and you provide them with resources to do that. Internal investigators at the SSA would uncover there were 72 agents. Among other things, the PAN slash fund was used to buy 293 cars, which they stored in leased warehouses across the country at a cost of 24 million rand. Poe continued in his book, quote, it was known as the principal agent network and had a limitless budget. Millions of rands in cash were transported in suitcases from a state money depot in Pretoria Central to The Farm, the nickname for the agency's headquarters, otherwise known as Musanda, on the shores of the Ridfle Dam, south of Pretoria. Much of the money in the Pan Slash Fund was squandered, close quote. According to Zondo's report, an internal team of the SSA conducted an investigation into the said PAN project. The Zondo report states, quote, The investigations involved Mr. Fraser. The crimes investigated were fraud and corruption. Properties had been bought with ulterior motives, which ended up in the hands of private individuals. People were employed without security clearance. 300 cars and computers were bought and not used. The number of houses bought was substantial, all over Gauteng. They were registered in the names of some private people, including children. All in all, an amount of about 600 million rand had been spent in that way. Testifying before the commission, the former DG of the SSA, Ambassador Jeff Makotuka, explained his concerns around Fraser's PAN project. It wasn't linked to any SSA structure. Reports didn't go to headquarters, the database was kept at Fraser's house in violation of security protocol. These actions were detrimental to the information, the informants, and undermined trust in the entire system that Makatuka said, quote, could be treasonable in other countries. He says Fraser was a law unto himself, acted with the authority of a director general when he wasn't, and it became a free-for-all with large sums of cash being carried out of the SSA with no accountability. The Hawks concluded their investigation into PAN and the National Prosecuting Authority was ready to prosecute. But then, in stepped State Security Minister Sia Bonga Twele, halting the whole process. Quote, apparently on the instructions of President Zuma, on the basis that prosecuting Mr. Fraser would compromise national security, close quote. Just as an aside, the state security minister, Siabonga Tuele's wife, Cheryl Tuele, was convicted of drug smuggling in May 2011 and sentenced to 20 years in jail. After her conviction, the couple divorced. But yeah, it doesn't instill confidence when the state security minister's wife is a drug lord. Intelligence operatives were even providing protection to her while she was being ferried to and from the courthouse. Must be nice. Back to Fraser. After a damning internal investigation of the PAN program, in 2010, Fraser resigned. Of course, he'd be back. 
In May 2014, David Machlobo would be appointed as the new state security minister by Zuma. Fun fact. Machlobo would be caught on camera in an Al Jazeera documentary chatting with a self-confessed criminal and rhino horn smuggler in a spa in Nelspruit in 2016. The rhino horn smuggler says in the video that he and the minister were friends and Machlobo had even visited his private home. These allegations were rubbished by the minister and nothing ever came of police investigations. Despite the cloud of allegations surrounding Fraser when he left the NIA, Machlobo appointed Fraser as the head of the state security agency in September 2016. Now, Machlobo stands accused of withdrawing 2.5 million rand a month, allegedly for Zuma's use. That figure later escalated to 4.5 million rand a month in cash. That is based on the evidence of two eyewitnesses. He is denying any wrongdoing. Something else Machlobo did when Fraser came into office as the DG is he increased the SSA's budget by a whopping 621% from 42 million rand in 2016-2017 to 303 million rand the following financial year. 74% of that budget would be used for covert operations directly out of Fraser's office. He too, Fraser, is implicated in withdrawing huge amounts of cash, 125 million rand of which remains unaccounted for personally by Fraser. The report found that there was also evidence of the most glaring abuse of the vetting system by Fraser when he was the DG. Quote, After the Inspector General of Intelligence, Dr. Dintwe, told Fraser that he was investigating him as the result of a complaint leveled against him with the Office of the Inspector General of Intelligence, Fraser revoked Dr. Dintwe's security clearance. Dr. Dintwe had to go to court to have his security clearance restored. The IGI is supposed to oversee the entire intelligence structure, including the work of the DG, Mr. Fraser. His removal of Dr. Dintwe's security clearance is like you going to your boss and revoking his or her's access to the building or blocking your boss from conducting a performance appraisal of you. Zondo recommends that the Hawks resume their investigations into the PAN program, that monies withdrawn and squandered be recouped, and that Fraser, among others, be investigated by law enforcement. The Chief Justice makes the point that our intelligence structures operate, or operated, like a law unto themselves. What illustrates this is the country didn't have an Inspector General of Intelligence, and actually still doesn't, the person tasked with parliamentary oversight for 22 months, Parliament failed to appoint anyone, and actually still hasn't. Over the decades, one gets a sense that there was a lot of mutually beneficial backscratching between Zuma and Fraser. Zondo says, quote, The picture that emerges is that Mr. Zuma put a stop to an investigation that could well have led to Mr. Fraser's arrest, prosecution, and maybe imprisonment. And Mr. Fraser put a stop to Mr. Zuma's continued incarceration. There's a circle that keeps going about in my head. Fraser gets his hands on the spy tapes, leaks it to Zuma's legal team. The NPA drops corruption charges against Zuma, and he becomes president of South Africa. Zuma stops charges being brought against Fraser for mass illegality in the PAN program. Fraser is then free to become director general of the SSA. Finally, Fraser, as Correctional Services Commissioner, grants Zuma his medical parole and lays charges against Ramaphosa, charges which continue to hang around the president's neck like an albatross. Arthur Fraser was a director general level in the SSA. Thereafter, he was uh, transferred to the prisons or corrections and was the thought that uh, from uh, other points of view that he would be able to make a contribution and in the end his contract came to an end. Uh, I mean, he has done what he has done and uh, he has the right as any citizen has to report uh, criminality we believe that there has been. Requests for comment were put to Fraser's attorney Eric Mabuza with no response. Thank you for watching.